Hey everyone, uh, a video very quickly on performance via nutrition. Now, as a nutritionist, I control protein, carbs, fats, vitamins, minerals, water. Now, to enhance performance in anybody from marathon runners to triathlon people, we want to look at air. Now, how do we breathe? And, and a lot of times when I do nutrition counseling, I look at um, how can I measure the lung capacity? So let's talk about the lungs. The lungs are two empty sacs inside your thoracic cavity. At the bottom here, you have, um, you have what is called as the diaphragm, right? So when you breathe, the diaphragm pulls down and your lungs uh, inflate. So I want to share with you uh, my screen today, uh, and I want to walk you through very quickly uh, how you can, you can imagine your lungs are working. So if you look at this over here, uh, your lungs, they inflate, right? You have intercostal muscles near the side of your ribs, and you have the diaphragm. And the bronchioles are all of these beautiful network which go to alveoli, right? So if, if I can just pause it at the alveoli, you have like almost huge football fields of these bronchioles if you, if you spread them out. And this is where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide get exchanged at these guys, the alveoli. Now, for every athlete, if I want to improve performance, alveoli is in touch with the blood. Blood, I have to look at the blood biochemistry but I can also look at improving the surface area of the oxygen going into the alveoli. So from this perspective, what I wanted to do today is I want to show you something that I use to train the athletes on, which is to check their lung capacity. So um, I'm gonna do a quick test today of my lungs and you know, you're gonna join me and I'm gonna to explain to you how we can do the, the lung test today. So I hope I'm in view today. Uh, this is me. So there's a speedometer over here to check your lung test. Okay. Now over here, I've got the flow, which is liters per second. And here's the volume. Now, every time an athlete, anytime a client comes to me, I am measuring not only height, weight, body fat, percentage, blood chemistry, uh, but I'm also not only looking at genetics and microbiome, I'm also looking at the lung function. How can you measure your efficiency of breathing every time you come in? Obviously, you go out and you train it every time. But um, let's check my lungs today, okay? So I'm going to do uh, inspiratory muscle training. Now, we breathe in through our nose and exhale through our mouth. So inspiration on this device is through the mouth. Because see, if you're an athlete, how do you breathe? <laughs> A lot of time people go and they do the spirometer and you blow out. Uh, you don't breathe uh, oxygen in that way. So inspiratory muscle training was discovered by some scientists in UK. And they said they developed a device called the power breath. And the power breath said that I, I can measure your lung capacity. I got the device here in India. I measure my athlete's lung, lung capacity. So this is how it works. You take in rapidly, you exhale slowly. So let's watch this uh, lung speedometer over here. Okay, so here goes. So you can see uh, my personal best has been 21.6, right? And that's my flow. Now I want to show you when an athlete comes to me, I'm looking at load, I'm looking at energy, I'm looking at inspiratory flow. Watch inspiratory flow, okay? Which is in this tangent over here, okay? So I'm going to do a very low breath. So I didn't, I didn't inhale properly. So you can see how that graph went, okay? Now let's do this with a solid breath, okay? And yeah, power breath training is I measure 30 breaths every time the athlete comes uh, across to me here at our clinic. So let's go. You can see... I raised down the pressure or load of water because I got a bit of, a, I think, a background cold from last week's viral. So I can feel that cold in there. But you can look at a bad breath, okay? Can you see that? Chuck, 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 right? So the whole idea is now if I measure these 30 breaths, okay? So, so far, I've done only 10 on 30 breaths. I, it'll take a long time to do all the breaths. But let me do a last nice breath, come back to my 
uh, basic view. I don't know. I don't want to show you a lot, but if you look over here, there's the power. You can see my powers come down, and this is my volume. Okay, so I'm going to try and go for a good power and a good volume for the next five breaths. So you can really see that uh, post the um, viral last week, I had a bad viral. My lungs are actually still congested. Uh, I'm not able to go even close to my 12.5. My volume's low down. So let's save this up and let me show you a comparison of my previous breaths. Um, you know, these are my four breaths the first day I did it. And if you look over here, you can see volume. Okay. So the first time I did it, can you see that 0.683 uh, liters volume per breath? That means each breath is 0.683. And then my peak was 2.463 liters. And today my average is 2.129. So let me look at today's session. I'm going to double click over there. You can see my different breaths. So you see when I was kind of doing those erratic breaths, I had a 1.347. And then I really decided to push myself. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know what last five breaths? Let me go for maximum volume capacity, right? So 2.53, but see how it tapered out. So I check athletes with uh, 30 breaths per session. And you can see this one session where I got 2.4336 as an average. So let's say you, this, you meet this Ryan with volume and you meet this Ryan with volume. <clears throat> You can come to know the change. So ideally speaking, you want your athlete to increment to their peak volume capacity. Average volume capacity is about six liters for elite athletes. The world record is at 12.5 liters for a British rower. Look at my load. Load is the amount of volume of water I can lift. So I lifted 20 centimeters of water on average today. But in the previous session, I did 22 centimeters. And then look at my flow. My flow last time was three point. 3.233 and this time it is 3.282. So if you look at that, you know, um, <clears throat> my flow went up. If you see my my load went really up and then I, I lowered it down because I couldn't pull because my lungs were not feeling too good. Not a great day to make a video, but you know, what's my perspective over here? My perspective is when I am looking at performance in the human individual, right? As a nutritionist, I'm looking to enhance the diet, right? But diet undergoes metabolism or combustion in the human body, which is the delivery of oxygen. So oxygen can be delivered throughout the day. Oxygen can be also tracked during your sports performance. So what my logic to every athlete out there is, could you train your lungs, stand alone without any physical activity? You know, it's like going to the gym and doing a bicep curl. We train only the bicep, but you're a tennis player. You're a football player. You do the power breath training to inspiratory muscle training to train your lungs with 30 breaths in the morning, 30 breaths in the evening. You improve the alveoli surface area. So I still remember when Robin did this, the cricketer Robin Uthpa did this long time ago. He started off at a two liter lung capacity and went on to a six liter lung capacity, right? So by just connecting the, 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 the neurons of the brain uh, to the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles and teaching yourself how to breathe better. Like, I mean, for example, I did this after three years of COVID the first time, right? And we did just a few breaths and I was not able to pull it in because I really had forgotten how to breathe. So then I went back home every day and then I practiced it. And the next time I came back, I was like, yeah, 2.46. Now, this is not something really great, but by showing an athlete a drop or an increment in a graph, you can really take the athlete to the next level. For example, I can even check my energy. So uh, I utilize 83 joules of energy in my uh, best session, but uh, in my peak session, uh, which was the second session, I actually used lesser energy because I was more efficient, right? So what I, I'm trying to build for an athlete is the ability to monitor their output. And if at a very young age, at a very young age, we can teach the athlete um, how to breathe better, how to, uh, you know, um, 
connect the brain to the breath pattern. One is metabolism will get more efficient. Exercise will get more efficient. Think about it, okay? How do you remove lactic acid from the muscle? Lactic acid uh, raises the pH in the blood and your uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen are one of the, what we call as buffer, buffering systems. So the more you have lactic acid, the more you have to expel carbon dioxide. That's why you get a lot of muscle burn. <laughs> You're breathing, right? So you're throwing out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide lowers down lactic acid. So meet this guy breathing heavy, 2.436, and meet this guy 2.12. Which guy is eliminating lactic acid faster? Obviously this guy, all right? Or for that matter, you have a tennis player and you played a 30, 40 point rally. Uh, a rally of 40 rallies and, you know, get a point. A and now you're tired. <sighs> now meet this guy at 2.463 liter lung capacity. <sighs> and then meet this guy at 2.12. Which guy will recover faster? Obviously the 2.4. So the whole idea will be from a physical supremacy point of view. Can you identify this to the athlete and enhance their performance? And from a blood chemistry point of view, I know that omega-3, I know that phosphatidylserine, I know that, uh, you know, uh, Brahmi, I know that um, uh, butterhead lettuce, beetroot help in vasodilation, I know that uh, lycopene boosts lung function, um, and there's just so much out there uh, that we can do from enhancing uh, not only the physical parameters of lung breathing, but also the biochemistry wherein the oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange happen. So one for performance, can you get an athlete to realize that their lungs are powerful? Can you get the athlete to realize that I've beaten elite, um, elite athletes on this, all right? Because they don't know how to use their lungs. And then once I show them, they're like, they just get it. They practice 30 breaths. They do the inspiratory muscle training minus any exercise. And many a times they come back to me and they say, oh, you know what? In the last 30 days, I just did five days of power breath practice. And I'm like, okay, come on, let's check it out. Has your graph gone down or has your graph gone up? So this is me, uh, Ryan Fernando, sharing snippets of my little bit of uh wisdom on how I enhance performance right from the Guinness World Record of nonstop aerobics to having won two Olympic medals uh, with Olympic wrestler Shushil Kumar to now we're working with uh, uh, Kenneth Bednarek, who's one of the fastest 200 meter athletes in the world. Performance, well, it's not just the food. It's about what you go into the background and no one size fits all. So whilst tomatoes may work for a Kenneth, it may not work for another athlete. So Everything is about data and how you take that data and analyze it. You can watch my courses at www.institutenutrition.com where I teach uh, about nutrition and supplements for a host of people. Uh, or you can enroll for a nutrition plan with me at www.quanutrition.com. My name is Ryan Fernando. I'm a sports nutritionist trying to make everyone fitter, stronger, faster, better. God bless you.